you know, been pretty good on keeping up with the shows this time. And another key point I felt we missed on one, maybe not missed because you did bring it up and acknowledge it. You know, we're talking to Carol Ann and Taconic, you know, your, your tidbit about knowing just enough about everything to shoot the shit about everything. What are you going to test me now? No, until the pineapple conversation, I never really embraced or knew how, how serious that was a, uh, of a thing for you. But um, I'm really surprised about all the uh, randomness John Edwards can speak on for 10 minutes. I'm good for like 10 minutes for everything. And then I know well enough that I am like a, I'm a hit and run type guy. Just start the conversation. Then then like the Homer uh, gif, you just slide back into the bushes. Yeah. It's like one of those things where it's like you get enough to let people like you, but you don't stay too long to make them hate you. (laughs) That's kind of, you know, like, uh, that's how I like to be. I get it. I had a professor in school. He used to take us these lectures and you know, seminars and things. And there was always a free meal involved, using some booze and stuff. And his kicker always was, if I take you to it, you better ask these people a question, A, to show you can think, and B, to see if they're smart enough to respond. As long as you ask a question, I'll continue taking them. But you know, you, you got to make your presence known and get your foot in the door. Yeah, you just, you're there enough that people leave with a good taste in their mouth for you. You don't want the finish to linger too long. But where do you learn about pineapples and swingers? It's just something that's got around in Nashville lore. (laughs) I'm certainly not a swinger. My name is John Edwards, and welcome to another episode of Dad Shrinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us a part of your day. And with me is Zeke Baker. Say hello to the folks, Zeke. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, I use it every now and then. Oh, man, people are chugging beers and whiskey right now. Good for them. Saying aloha. I wish I was. I'm sure you wish you were, but we are drinking something pretty good tonight. We're going to get to it. We're going to be talking about the Pinhook Cast Strength. It is a blend. It is still under Bourbon Country, which is the horse from the fall release. There is a new rye that came out that is rye humor. That is a new rye release. There will be a new bourbon release every year. With that bourbon release coming out, there will be a new horse. But this one... This cast strength is still under the Bourbon Country horse, and, and we wish that horse all the best. I'd love to bet on bourbon and make some money on it. but I was going to say, should we double down now? I don't know. I, I mean, I think we might have to do win, place, and show. I, I normally like to hedge my bets, but Sean's not helping us out with this one. Well, that's why if you go, <laughs> say you do 20 across the board, and the horse comes in third, you're bound to at least make your money back. Maybe he knows something we don't about uh, the upcoming future for Bourbon Country. I don't know. Well, the one that you have to look out for is actually Bourbon War. I'm not sure if that one is actually going to go to the Derby, but it certainly has enough points to get there. Oh, wow. It just came in fourth in the Florida Derby. That is the horse that is under the Bourbon Lane Stables. If that horse makes it to the Derby, I'm sure that Pinhook is going to do something nice around that. But I know Sean would love to be there along with his his friends over at Bourbon Lane, sitting in the the owner's section and going to the paddock before the race, all that fun stuff. It's it's an incredible thing to be able to do from someone who used to cover the Derby for the Horse Racing Radio Network. And if you're listening to the Derby this year or have a tailgate going on, please go listen to my friends at the Horse Racing Radio Network. Listen to Mike and Sean and Jude and Kurt and all those folks over there that would be giving you the live broadcast of the Kentucky Derby. They do a very, very good job. But, Zeke, there is nothing like the Derby. There is nothing, and maybe you might not feel the same way because you're a Georgia guy and me being a Kentucky guy, but when they play my old Kentucky home during the post parade, there's nothing to make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and just goosebumps going all over my body. When those horses come out, you're about to do the f- 
the greatest two minutes in all of sports is the Kentucky Derby. I'm just baffled by the simple knowledge that you have of a previous release that's now eligible and could possibly be in the dirty. Derby. It was not a release. He hasn't released it as as a pinhook release yet. It's just a oh. horse in the stable. Oh, look at you, insider knowledge. Uh-huh. And another 10 minutes of ramble that no one else in the world, in my world, would have known. <laughs> I mean, I do still follow <laughs> horse racing. I used to cover it for a long time. I, I covered horse racing for about seven years. Now and, I know what you're doing late night. Yeah. Well, there is no gambling <laughs> in Tennessee, so you gotta you got to drive up to Kentucky Downs if you want to play some bets. I'm not sure about this Kentucky Home song either. It, I can think of the, uh, that, the West Virginia Mountain Mama thing. That's about it. You've never heard of my old Kentucky Home? I don't know. I don't think so. The basketball team plays it after every win over Georgia. Well, that... It's probably a lot of games. Yeah. I don't think I ever saw a basketball game in my four years of Athens. Really? We weren't that good. <laughs> Still aren't. You go to football. I'm not going to sing my old Kentucky home, but I'll play it for you after this show. Uh, I mean, I'm sure we could play it under a Creative Commons license right now, but yeah. I think the people are good. They, they want to hear about the booze. They do want to hear about the booze, but before we get in there, have you ever been to the Derby, though? No. Why not? I've been to Talladega. You've been to Steeplechase here in Nashville, but... In Talladega. But do people dress up to go to Talladega? Actually, they, they dress down. The less you wear, the better. So are you there like a G-string with a banana hammock? I will say the year I went, one of my close friends, which happens to live in Nashville now, and actually has more chest hair than you and I combined, if that's possible. It was the year after a senior died. Yeah. And he shaved an eight into his chest hair. I don't know how many people took pictures with him the entire day. It was absurd. Everywhere we went, adults, kids, everybody. Can we get a picture? Can we get a picture? I don't want to uh, be bad. Point of order, though. Senior was three. Junior was eight. Maybe it was a three then. Senior was three. Junior was eight. I don't follow NASCAR very much, admittedly. He did it as a joke and then just got inundated the entire day with picture requests. And was like, this was the worst idea ever. Like I said, I know enough. <laughs> I know enough to talk about anything. Another interesting thing that you should be able to talk about for ten minutes. Do you know that that there was the first image ever of a black hole that was released yesterday? I didn't find it very impressive. It was very impressive, but what was impressive about it? You didn't find it very impressive. No, there was a ring and a black hole in the middle. Oh, well, it's called a black hole. Yeah, but you've never actually seen one photographed. You see all the light, and and light in space is actually, there's a tremendous amount of stuff that's going to make it that bright to us from this many light years away. I, I read books about space to the boy every night right now. It's one of his new jams. I'm just saying it's a crazy thing. I mean, if you think about all the... The stuff that's going on, the collisions, all the energy that is actually in that ring around the black hole. Man, just the universe is incredible. It's wasted money in my world. Wasted money? I would shut down NASA immediately if I could. Why? We're never going to live anywhere else. (laughs) What's the point? How many millions of dollars going to NASA every year for nothing? You don't want to have the USS Enterprise... At some point in your life? It's strictly wasted money on speculation that will never amount to anything. I think as a society, and not to get off of the bourbon talk, but... You brought it up. As a society, (laughs) we're always going to yearn to understand what we don't know. And people are always going to spend money and have that as an investment because there's always going to be people that are going to want to know what's out there. And if we don't do that... Think about without the space program, you wouldn't have a cell phone right now. Or WD-40. Well, just saying. Or Tang. Or astronaut ice cream. Or anything like that. You're not going to have... Think about how many satellites are out there right now and and how much of our society it powers. And you want to cut funding to the space program? I'm just telling you, I don't believe in it. You'd rather us like have quill pens and... Write letters to each other still? For the millions of dollars that have been spent and what's come out of it, it's not a very good checks and balance. Do you use a GPS in your car? Not too often. Do you ever use GPS when you're going on a road trip or anything? 
John, you can't tell me that GPS is worth millions and millions of dollars. Think about how many people use GPS every day. I mean, think about how many people still don't believe we ever landed on the moon. The flag's still there. You seen it? What? Yeah, MTV made a moon man out of it. You seen it? Because I ain't seen it. <laughs> you and your... Zeke and his conspiracy theories. Yeah. I, I can't... I can't figure you out because some things you go one way, some things you go the other. and It just, it just seems like a waste of money to me. You zigged when I thought you were going to zag. Anyways, let's talk about this pin hook cast strength. It is just shy of four years old. It's a blend of 75 MGP barrels. That's right. A blend of 75 MGP barrels. Sean Joseph's just took... Whatever Mike Drop was doing and just amplified it by a million because, <laughs> you know, they had something like 20 barrels, give or take, but 75 barrels went into this blend. So whatever Sean Joseph's and Marianne Barnes were doing to actually make this happen, it, it's crazy. It is non-chill filtered, no carbon dosing, so it was just screen filtered for the char. That's all they did was run it through a screen so that we weren't picking out bits of char as we drank this. It is a 115.3 proof, and it comes in at $49.99. Is it all the same mash, I wonder? I don't know that. That's a great question. It's a blend of 75, but we don't know what the mashes are. Granted, I'm sure they're not all bourbons, but considering MGP's running 20-plus mashes... You could really tinker and throw some interesting curves in there. Absolutely. There could be a lot of good stuff from here. And I will say that uh, the, the, the 95.5 that's coming off from MGP of uh, light whiskey, 95 corn, 5 barley. Yeah. It's a very interesting sweetness. Huh. I haven't had that one yet. It's intriguing. Other things that are intriguing are this whiskey. So what did you get? When you tasted this one? Nose-wise, at first, I picked up um, fresh, warmish toffee, like before it's solidified kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Then it really moved to a floral space, and I'm not the best on this. I put down poinsettia, maybe like an Easter lily, but it reminded me of just fresh, vibrant flowers at church on the altar. You know, and you go up there on a Sunday morning, and you just catch that woof. That, that's what it was, and it was a very interesting floral space for me. What did you get in the taste? Sweet cotton candy, runts, Laffy Taffy. Toward the back, a little bit of pep kick kind of thing, maybe a little bit of wood, not much. But really, the whole front end of it was just very sweetness, and that's why I kind of wondered if these were all the same mash bill or not. As far as a finish, <laughs> very simply, I put whoosh. Kid likes airplanes these days. We got yeah. airplane books, and when uh, the plane takes off, the book says whoosh. So that's where it was. It was just gone. Not complaining, but you know, young products not necessarily going to have a heavy finish. No, but for 115 proof, I thought it was it was refreshing in the sense that it, it's an easy drinker for 115 proof. So my my nose, I said sweet candy. It almost noses like a barrel-aged gin over a bourbon without the heavy juniper. That's Just, interesting because I had juniper and marked it out. Not to cut you off, but I had it, and then I couldn't decide if that was really what I was picking up just from not enough experience with it, but uh, I, I did mark that out. It, it just didn't have like a bourbon nose. It was almost like a barrel-aged gin there for me. I said... It's floral, but the reason, one of the reasons I said it was like a barrel-aged gin is just there is a lot to the nose, and that it must be the 75 different bourbons that are going into it, but there's just a lot going on here, and it's one of those ones that you almost have to sit down for the nose for like an hour to really dive in and figure out exactly what's in there. But you're going to give a lot of general statements like floral, stuff like that, instead of really diving in as we're trying to do this show. The taste, I got cinnamon spice tingle, gets you right at the onset. Lots of candy, 
on the the taste to me, but there are other dark notes to this, like dark fruit, dark chocolate, and some leather towards the end. And then I said the finish was medium. It was very light for a uh, a, a cast strength. It was nothing that was going to beat you up or or make you feel like sometimes cast strength can be too heavy on the other end this one is not going to make you feel it's not going to knock you on your ass no i mean i I kind of equated it to simply um you know some boxers or fighting styles is literally you know you come out swinging as hard as you can in the first three rounds just trying to knock somebody out that was similar to me like the the front end between the nose and just everything hits you right away you're like, whoa. Then you just kind of sink back into your chair. So it's not a negative thing there's, that there's no finish. I just feel like there's so much that happens on the front. You're just kind of like, oh, all right, let me sit back and take this in for a minute. 100% with you. Uh, but no, that, that, that's funny about the juniper because I literally marked it out. Like, Is that really what I'm smelling like? You know, we just don't get it enough to know. But much agreed, just a whole lot between the nose and the original front end of this. And I have no clue what it's like to to blend seventy five barrels. Obviously, I don't I don't think you do either. But I feel like that's almost a um, a potluck experience. I'm kind of upset. Like Sean, where was our call? We we want to go <laughs> blend seventy five whiskeys with you. I could taste the three of them and been happy. Yeah, we would have been there. Like add this one. That, that's what you should do. But. At the end of the day, though, for 50 bucks, this is not something... It's not corn-heavy. It's not young. I didn't get any youthful notes from it, with maybe the exception of, of the finish not being as prevalent. But I didn't get a lot of corn on the nose. It was more floral to me than anything, and I really enjoyed this. Yeah, same here. And from having have a at least a couple or three different releases of some of that 95.5, and none of them are what you and I would think of as corn forward or heavy. That's just why I wonder if they're all the same mash. They did a varied blend. Obviously, people can buy different corn and use different grains, and, and what MGP seems to be running off these days yields a much different, uh, you know, Swedish candy-ish profile as opposed to just showing the, the youthful and, uh, you know, corn so to speak it was a great philosopher luke bryan once said rain makes corn and corn makes whiskey but what makes your beard awful frisky still corn <laughs> <laughs> so are you uh what are you are are you a buy bar or pass on this one i have a bar you know 50 bucks cash strength i'm sure there'll be people that talk about age and if that's a deciding factor to you then you may not buy it, but if you have it in a blind, I don't think anyone will find it uh, off-putting or non-enjoyable. I am a buy. I just like Pinhook uh, anyway, you know, with my background, but also I think when you can find a good cast strength for 50 bucks, knowing that prices are going up in other cast strengths that are out there, the companies like this, it's Pinhook, it's New Riff, it's Deconic. It, you look for some of those smaller distilleries to to pick up the slack, and it's refreshing that they are putting things out at fifty dollars opposed to the seventy or eighty that some of those other cast strengths are going out at. So for me, this is a buy. I don't think you'll be disappointed with this one at all. It is a very enjoyable drinker, and it was a good time. So that's where I stand. Same here, you know, to the folks that do get hung up on age statements, I would almost challenge them to try it and then uh, tell me it's not good. Exactly. Anyways, if you've tried this and you want to tell us what your feelings are, go ahead and find us on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads. I'm sure you're already listening, but follow us on your favorite podcast app. Leave us an open and honest review. We'd love to hear from you. Visit dadsdrinkybourbon.com. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? If you want to share your thoughts, you can send those to me. John's a feelings guy. I'm a thoughts guy. A thinker. (laughs) But you can also go find our Facebook group, and it is 
Dad's Drinking Bourbon, answer a couple questions, we'll let you in, and we are open to discussion. A lot of great discussion happens in that group. Also want to remind you that we will be covering the Nashville Cocktail Festival later on this month. Go ahead and find them on Facebook, find them on Instagram, go to NashvilleCocktailFestival.com. There's going to be some great stuff. There's going to be a panel on bourbon that will be a dinner at Husk. And Beth Burrows from Jim Beam is coming out for that. She is always interesting to talk to. There's going to be the opening night. There's going to be rum and there's going to be some yak, Zeke's favorite thing. There's so many things. There's going to be a tiki panel on Saturday that would be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to going to the tiki panel. You want to borrow my Hawaiian shirt? I don't know. Would it fit me? Peasley loves it. Nothing like a fat guy in a Hawaiian shirt. With one button in the middle. (laughs) Fat guy in a little coat. (laughs) Anyways, go ahead and find us. Zeke, we'll be back in a few days, right? Lord willing, the creek don't rise. It's supposed to storm again, so we'll see. Cheers. Ciao.